Hello, I'm Joe, and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop. A few months ago, I acquired a 10-inch Palmgren rotary table, and I've been a little surprised at how handy it's been. I've used it a lot more than I would have thought. It came with uh, a 6-inch four-jaw chuck, Pretty nice one, made in Japan, very tight, uh, appears to be n nearly new, in very good condition. But I'm finding that almost everything I do on this rotary table would work better with a three-jaw scroll chuck. It'd be just that much quicker to indicate uh, items uh, in the rotary table and, and it'd be more convenient. So I've got this older bison eight inch three jaw scroll chuck. I replaced it with a set true version of the same thing, another bison eight inch. So this one is available. And I also have this ugly old piece of tooling plate that came out of a CNC machine shop. I think I can make an adapter to quickly and conveniently mount this eight inch chuck onto the Palmgren rotary table and it'll be a, a much handier tool for me. Before we go to the roll around cart and take a look at these pieces of hardware, uh, let's look at the mail. I got an envelope from Belgium from Michelle Van Hove, and I'm sure I pronounced both of those names wrong, but it doesn't really matter because he prefers to go by Rustinox. He's a very entertaining and very knowledgeable machinist who is also the captain of a supply barge uh, in Belgium. Uh, fascinating guy to watch and he's got a very nice small shaper and he knows quite a bit about running it. So if you want to learn something about little shapers and how much you can do with them, uh, check out his channel. I'll try to put a link right up here to his channel. Go check him out. He's, he's a, a, a neat fellow to watch. He's funny and he's sharp. So now let's go to the roll around cart and look at my pieces of stuff to play with. Here's the back end of the chuck. I took the mounting plate off, thinking that it was just a mounting plate, but this was built as a D14 chuck. Uh, it's not a chuck with a mounting plate bolted onto it. So I'll just take the, the, the D14 mounting pins off and uh, bolt this plate to my adapter and uh, just just use it as an assembly just the way it is. I need to do a little cleaning in here. It's not real bad, but while I got it open, I'll clean that up a bit. Uh, the first thing I want to do, I hope I can get this to show, swing the camera just a bit. There is a raised diameter right here. This uh, the mounting surface, the D14 mounting surface, is raised about 50 thousandths off of the the back plane of the of the uh, mounting plate, and th this has about a 30 degree angle here. I want to put this plate in the big lathe and turn that 30 degree feature down to a 90 degree register that will make a pilot uh, and then I'll bore uh, a matching counter bore in this tooling plate uh, to, uh, to, to match that so that this uh, uh, is well registered and will remain concentric. So that'll be the first project to get this thing over to the big lathe. Let's see how this works. I've got this running uh, within about a half a thousand uh, both 
uh, laterally and radially uh, to run out in the two directions. I got a couple of views set up here. I'm not sure how well either one of them will show the process, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> I think I'm very happy with that. I'm not even going to touch it with the file. I left uh, just two or three thousandths of that original 60 degree chamfer and uh, just uh, cleaned out up to the edge of it. Uh, so I've got my pilot left there. I'm not, not going to take any more off than that. I took this to the bandsaw cut off most of the excess stock. Now I want to uh, use the end mill to trim this off to a uniform width, uh, get this, turn it into pretty much uh, square. So we'll run around uh, the left and right sides as we've got her fixtured right now and then uh, turn it and do a dress cut on the, uh, on the front and back. Speed is going to be about uh, around about 600 RPM. Now I'll turn it 90 degrees and we'll take the same skim cut on the front and the back to clean those edges up. They're pretty beat up from years of uh, tooling plate use. I finished facing the other side of that. Put a little bit of a finish cut on the outer corners here so I could get at it with the dial indicator when I reversed it. I've got it reversed and ready to finish up the counter bore for the pilot on the chuck base. Once again, I find myself wishing I had a pair of precision flat stones to touch up these surfaces before I put them together. I don't know, but I hope within a couple of months to be making my own precision flat stones on a surface grinder that I've recently acquired, and that'll be the subject of some uh, uh, playlist of videos, probably a number of them. But for the moment, I have cleaned this as well as I can with the tools I have. Time to put it together. I'm going to use the holes in the back plate of the chuck that are uh, uh, provided for jack bolts to jack the, the, uh, the 
plate, plate off of the body of the chuck. I'm going to use those. Uh, uh, that registers nicely. Uh, right now the only 10 millimeter by 1.5 bolts I have are, are these that are a hair too long. I use them with a the washer. I've got uh, hex head cap screws ordered. For the moment though, we'll get by with these. Let's see if these will go in and, and bolt up. I got my pilot turned down just a bit oversized of inch and five eighths in the big lathe. I was trying to think of a good way to eliminate all of the variables between this pilot and the clamping surface of the chuck. So this is what I came up with. I put a piece of ground and polished two and a quarter inch cylinder shafting in the lathe, uh, in the chuck in the lathe. I dialed that in with the set true feature so that it has uh, less than a quarter thousandth of run out. Then I put the rotary table chuck onto that piece of cylinder shafting. And now when I turn this pilot the last ten thousandths of an inch, I should be lined up dead center with the clamping surface of this chuck at two and a quarter diameter. Uh, and so I should be pretty close. You know, what are we looking to get? Two or three thousandths concentricity uh, with a three jaw chuck. I should, I should be able to, to get uh, within that without any trouble. So let's get this turned off. I got this speed down pretty low, uh, so this will take a minute. We'll, we'll show a little bit and then, uh, and then move on. That's about as close as I can measure to 1.625. I've got that same piece of two and a quarter inch cylinder shafting chucked up in the uh, rotary table chuck. Set on zero. Let's run around and see what she looks like. That's a little under two thousandths. That's actually uh, about twice as good as I had hoped for. I, uh, I would have, I was hoping for three would have settled for four. So I guess it's 50% better than I, I hoped for. Uh, th that's very acceptable for the kind of work that's going to be done on this rotary table. For the moment, I'm done. I'm done with this project uh, and I'm uh, happy with the way this plate came out. I think I'm going to match mark the, the uh, chuck and mounting plate to the table, uh, some kind of witness marks that I can find uh, in the future so it gets set back up the same way uh, every time. But this 2000s run out uh, on, on a setup like this is, is just exceptionally good. Very happy with that. That will wrap up this video. I'm quite happy with the way that turned out. I will be back into that rotary table in the future to address a couple of other issues, but for the moment, it'll work fine. Thank you for stopping by the shop. 
If you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe. Wouldn't mind a comment. Wouldn't mind a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.